Well, hello everybody. I'm Sarah Tinker, Minister with the Kensington Unitarians Community, and here we are, gathered once again in this virtual Sunday morning space on Zoom, reaching out and connecting with you. However you're feeling today, whatever is going on for you in life at this time, wherever you are and whatever is calling to you. And this morning, we're joined by visitors from the Godalming congregation. And so an especial welcome to you and to anyone else who is visiting us in person today. A warm hello as well to those of you listening on a podcast or watching a video of this service on YouTube sometime in the future. Those of you who are with us on Zoom and are new to our Sunday morning gathering, please feel free to join in at a level that is right for you. It's fine just to sit back and listen and switch off your video if that's more restful for you. There's no need to join in in any active way, though there is chance to speak and sing if you want at several points in this gathering. But your presence here in community is what matters most, so please make yourselves comfortable. And my hope is that each of us will find something in this gathering that touches a need in us, be it for laughter or serious thought, for stimulation or soothing, for comfort or challenge. May we all find something of that which we seek. And if you do come here with a heavy heart this day, know us to be a community that can bear the weight with you. Now, if life had not turned up, if life had not been turned upside down by the COVID-19 pandemic, the streets here in Notting Hill over the next two days would have been very lively indeed. But this should have been the 54th Notting Hill Carnival, the largest street festival in Europe. The carnival is carrying on online as an online music event this year. And our theme today explores the idea of life's carnival continuing, even though our ways of connecting with one another have had to alter so much over the last five months in order to keep one another safe. Now, if you've ever been to a carnival, um, you'll perhaps have a sense of how very physical it is, with music that vibrates through your body and fills your ears, great food, all your senses heightened. People speak of the effect of the crowds of merging in a mass of human beings, all up for having a good time, dancing, singing. So I thought some words of kindness for these bodies of ours would be a good way to start today. And I invite you to take one of those deep conscious breaths now as a way to settle us in the here and now. Let's breathe in all goodness and breathe out any niggles of mind and body for a while at least. And these words of welcome are written by Sean Neil Barron. And I wonder if any of his words speak directly to you today. Your body is welcome here, all of it. Yes, even that part and that part. Yes, even that part, the parts you love and the parts you don't. For in this place we come with all that we are, all that we have been and all that we are going to be. Our bodies join in a web of co-creation, created and creating, constantly changing, constantly changing us scarred and tattooed, tense and relaxed, diseased and cured, unfamiliar and intimate, formed in infinite diversity of creation, your body is welcome here, all of it. So take a moment and welcome it. Take a moment to feel in your body. Take a moment to be in your body.
and our chalice flame is lit here as it is in all our Unitarian and Unitarian Universalist gatherings the world over. It's one light reminding us that despite our world's many divisions, we are indeed one human race, living our lives upon this, our one planet Earth home. Now, how shall we live? And let's take those issues and any, any issues that we're holding in our hearts today. I always think there are, there are things that, of course, we wouldn't speak of in front of a camera online in this way, but we know those issues are there in our hearts. So why don't you bring those issues with you into this time of prayer, prayer and reflection. So let's make ourselves as comfy, comfy as we can. Take a bit of time to turn inwards, to bring all of ourselves to this moment. Align ourselves with that which guides our living in this world. The source of life's meaning and purpose for us. Ground of our very being. And I ask you to hold in your hearts this day all those people who long to party, who miss their social lives, who grieve the lack of carnivals and feel aggrieved that rules are interfering with their pleasures. May they find ways to party safely and remember their responsibilities to the greater good of all. May each of us find ways to connect safely with others and especially ways to reach out to people who may be feeling isolated at the moment. Let us think too of all the young people starting school this next week and those who teach them that they may find pleasure in learning and in being together once more. May they be safe. We know that life is a mix of joy and sorrow, and we know that life opportunities are not fairly distributed amongst us. So may all those who know sorrow also find some joy this day on their journey through life. And may the joy filled be gentle in sharing their happiness with others. Let's take a moment in quietness now to speak our own prayers for those we know to be in need this day. And may each of us find ways to bring the prayers of our hearts into the work of our hands. And to that aspiration, let us say together, Amen. And now, Harold is going to read to us. It's a well-known piece from the Prophet by Khalil Gibran. This is called On Joy and Sorrow. Your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the self-same well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine, the very cup that was burned in the potter's oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit, the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, 
Look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily, you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at standstill and balanced. When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and silver, needs must your joy or your sorrow rise or fall. And now we move into a time of meditation. So you might want to get into a comfy position where you can relax for six minutes or so. There'll be a few words about our ability to hold ourselves and our lives more lightly. And that will lead into three minutes of silence and the silence will end with some piano music. So feel free to switch off your video for this section if you prefer. And remember that you don't have to follow these suggestions at all. They are just suggestions. And you may have your own ways of relaxing and going deeper. But if it works for you, you might close your eyes now or soften your gaze. And take one of those lovely breaths that go deep into the belly. And as you breathe that breath in and out, you could imagine releasing some of the tension that all of us store. Those tight muscles in our, our shoulders, our necks, our backs maybe. The tension we hold in our faces. Now might be a time to take a bit of a stretch and help our muscles release and let go. Increasing our feeling of ease. And perhaps using the gentle rhythm of our breathing to bring us an increased sense of lightness in the body. We might find ourselves just lifting up a bit here in the sternum, the chest area, straightening our backs so that our shoulders drop down towards the floor a bit. Perhaps imagining a, a string from the crown of our heads, lifting us up just a touch, easing the force of gravity for a few minutes, playing with the idea of holding ourselves lightly, however heavy and serious the challenges of our lives sometimes are. The Buddhist writer, Pema Chodron, tells us that the key to feeling at home with your body, mind and emotions, to feeling worthy to live on this planet, comes from being able to lighten up. She invites us to let go of some of our sense of earnestness, any seriousness that we feel. And her words may not resonate with you at all this morning, and that's fine. But I wonder if there's some message here for some of us. When we ask ourselves the question, how might we hold ourselves a little more lightly, even when living is a very serious business indeed? Let's take that question into the Fellowship of Silence now. A silence that will lead into some piano music played for us by Peter Crockford.
I was going away. After much internal debate, procrastination, and not a little anxiety, a decision had been made. We booked a passage on Eurotunnel and the die was cast. No going back now. My companion and I had both been super cautious for nigh on five long months of semi-isolation and we were finally off. We left by the mantle of night and emerged into, well, the gloom of an early morning in France, to be honest. But we were there. We had made it. There were no flags to mark our arrival, no shouts of welcome. It was on to the motorway and off we went. But oh, the exhilaration, the sheer childish excitement of it all, free from the shackles of confinement and heading for a house with a pool and hosts eager to join with us in a few days of shared meals, possible cautious outings, and a birthday celebration with the lady of the house to boot. They were as eager to see us as we were to see them. Their own children and grandchildren were back in the UK, unable for various reasons to make the trip. We basked in each other's company. Lazy days by the pool, shared meals, cool drinks, and amiable banter. The joy was in slowly getting to know my hosts, who I'd only met at the odd party thrown by my companion. Christmas carols, quick conversations before you moved on to another couple, that sort of thing. We had all been terribly spoilt in our previous lives of gregarious intercourse. How little we valued those casual conversations of the past, those snatched anecdotes, brief encounters, before heading for the next animated group. Now we had time to savor every word and gesture, to air those favorite jokes, put on silly voices, and pretend that all was well for a few days. And of course, all was well. We were doing what human beings were made for, socializing with our neighbors in a relaxed, congenial environment. Mealtimes were an opportunity to swap favorite recipes, recount memorable feasts, and share memories of past failures too. Mine concerned a waiter in New Zealand some years back. I'd complained about the minuscule portion of risotto that I'd been served. I remember being reduced to eating my meal grain by grain so as not to embarrass my friends should I finish too soon. When I dared complain, which I don't do very often, the waiter remarked the chef wished to point out that quality came before quantity. And I was silenced. But back to the holiday. If there was one thing that was missing, it was the Gallic habit of kissing on both cheeks, la bise, as it is known in France. There's a whole etiquette of how many pecks you can take. Is it three for an acquaintance and up to five for a close friend? Or is it the other way around? And doesn't it depend on whether you are in the provinces or in the metropole? Oh well, they will have to wait until this whole sad mess we call COVID-19 is finally over. It's a small price to pay for helping con to contain this terrible virus and it certainly challenges our ingenuity in finding safe ways of being with each other. Of course, we were not together the whole time. There was plenty of opportunity for quiet reflection, whether taking a snooze by the pool or, or retiring to one's bed for a private moment or two. It was during such times that one inevitably reflected about the whole experience. We all need that private time to process the events of the day, but it was good to be with people. I don't know about the rest of you, but I sort of come alive when I'm with people, though because of my circumstances, I spend a good deal of time on my own. Oddly enough, it's not necessarily the conversation that is the chief attraction. Many is the time I've been with friends where there have been periods of relative quiet where we were able to relax 
into a comfortable space which did not require words. That is perhaps the mark of solid friendships. But this holiday was more about getting used to the unfamiliar territory of social proximity. Don't you just hate the way social distancing has become an acceptable part of our language? It seems so counterintuitive to our natural urge to embrace and not shy away from our neighbor. But live with it we must, for we know that it is for everyone's well-being. The holiday was a success, despite being cut short by a mad dash through the night and early morning to avoid the newly imposed quarantine measures. We did it. We survived it. We made it back home. Was it all worth it? Of course it was. Old friendships were strengthened and new ones begun. The RAF has a motto, per ardua ad astra, through adversity to the stars. Well, there was nothing arduous about this particular encounter. If you discount the terrible cues at the Blackwall Tunnel on our return to England, but that's become almost a rite of passage. And it gave me the very welcome opportunity to share my tale with you all this morning. Vive la France, vive l'Angleterre, and long live the joy of connecting with others responsibly. Thank you for that, Harold. Um, and so there's an opportunity to sing a hymn now, but like all Unitarian activities, this is optional. Um, if you'd rather just read the words that are going to appear on the screen, that's fine. Uh, but if you do like singing, we'll join in with gusto, safe in the knowing that we'll all be completely muted. No one will hear you. And this hymn, uh, Here I Am, reminds us how much more we can achieve when our strengths join with the strengths of others. We need one another, don't we? I hope you enjoy this recording from the Unitarian Music Society, sung to a tune some of us will remember from childhood. Here I am, all alone, can't do this job on my own. to hear what you did on your holidays um, and uh, thank you too to uh, Janine and to Jane for all the really essential background work of hosting today and to our pianist uh, Peter Crockford who brought us our music and um, yeah to everybody involved and for all of you too for joining us it's good to spend time with you here today we'll be back here again for next week's gathering at 10 a.m here on zoom and you're also welcome to join us on Tuesday for our coffee morning. Thank you uh, today to everyone who's made a donation towards church running costs in the last few weeks. They are much appreciated 
and they're helping to keep our particular work going out there in the world. Partly because of your generosity, we've not yet had to dig too deeply into our church reserves. But if you do win the lottery in the next week, do think of Essex Church and our new donate button on the front page of our website. It's such fun to use that donate button. Um, I wanted to mention the excellent Hucklo Summer School talks that are available now on YouTube. Do get in touch with Jane Blackall or, or me if you want to know more about those, but they really were top quality. Speaking the truth in love. Um, we're going to be having a virtual coffee time to chat after this service in small groups if you'd like to join in and we'd like to take a photo of you all as soon as the music ends so do stick around if you don't mind being in a photo and perhaps put your camera back on if you're resting back at the moment but again optional. We're going to have some closing words in a moment followed by a classic of pub sing-alongs so you might want to uh, sing along to this one as well the tune Friends and Neighbours made popular by Max Bygraves all those years ago. Um, and so I invite you now to select gallery view on your screen so that we can all see one another for the closing words and enjoy a feeling of connection in community. Just take a moment to have a look at everybody here today. It's a treat to be together, isn't it? And so I extinguish our chalice flame, but not the warmth of this community. And I send the light of this candle out into the world that all lives can be blessed with sweet pleasures that harm no one, but rather contribute to the greater well-being of all in this carnival of our lives. Unitarian minister Cliff Reed wrote these lovely closing words called Life's Sweetness. I wonder if they in any way speak particularly to you today. Grant us freedom from the fear of the future that blights the present. Grant us freedom from the too desperate hoping that denies this moment now. Grant us the freedom to taste life's sweetness and to live it lovingly. To let go when the time comes and so be blessed. Amen. Go well, all of you, in the week ahead, and indeed, blessed be.